Yes, hi. Look, I've only got a few minutes, so I thought I'd prepare something because I've got lots to say. Um, look, hi. My name's Dawn Jex. I'm the founder of the Hands Off Point Parent Campaign, and I'm here to talk to you about a proposal called the Mangles Bay Marina, uh, which in reality is a canal housing development that Landcorp, in partnership with Cedar Woods, uh, are pushing for at Point Perrin near Rockingham. So this proposal uh, involves the privatisation of 80 hectares of public land in the middle of the Rockingham Lakes Regional Park at Point Perrin, including a Bush Forever site. It involves digging a big hole in the middle of the regional park for an inland marina and surrounding it with canal housing. And of the 80 hectares that they want to privatise of public land, uh, most of it's for housing, for people who can afford a dwelling costing a million plus. So this would mean about a third of the green space at Point Perrin uh, would be taken, taken up and replaced with car parks, concrete, bricks and asphalt. And by the way, did I mention that you guys are paying for it? I'll get to that in a minute. So, so far, the developers have had public subsidies totalling about $4.4 million. Uh, from WA taxpayers, oh, sorry, with WA taxpayers providing the biggest chunk of that, and that was $3.7 million of our money handed over by Colin Barnett a year after he was elected last time around, so in 2009. And when you think about it, $3.7 million would go a very long way to, uh, towards addressing our uh, hospital waiting lists and our public housing waiting lists, where in this state we have single mothers living in cars with children. Shameful, Mr Barnett. Bad decision and a wrong priority. And without the $3.7 million of our money, courtesy of uh, Colin Barnett, to fund this proposal, it wouldn't be happening because there is no way any developer would be putting their hands into their pocket with their own money with such a risky proposal. Risky? I'll get to that and it'll blow you away just how dumb this idea is. So this land that I'm talking about uh, was back in 1964, was transferred from the Commonwealth to the state on the condition that the land is kept uh, restricted to recreation and parklands. Uh, and the idea was it would eventually all become an A-class reserve. Uh, and then in 1968, there was another uh, agreement that we tracked down where it actually said more explicitly that the land, uh, confirming the land was not to be used for, for private, industrial, common, uh, commercial or residential development. Then in 2000, most of the land at Point Perham was uh, classified bush forever by the, the then state government. So since 1964 until now, the people of WA have been waiting for this land at Point Perrin to become an A-class reserve. So it's important to note this proposal that they, this idea Barnett has for digging up a big hole in our regional park and uh, surrounding it with canal housing, that is it's putting, stopping us realising the vision that was always there from our forefathers. Can you imagine? If, when King's Park was set aside, that if people want to go in and bulldoze that, well, we see uh, Point Perrin as the King's Park of the South. So why is there so much community opposition? If you hadn't already worked out, there's certainly plenty of reasons so far. Well, this project is risky and it's doomed to fail because from an engineering and environmental point of view, the area is totally unsuitable for this type of development. For a marina, you need deep water. And the thing is, Mangles Bay is shallow. It's, it's known for snorkelling, seagrass meadows, this sort of thing. Uh, juvenile fish nursery, it's on the edge of the Showwater Islands Marine Park. Um, so you just can't put a big line there and say, right, there's a marine park there, and then here's your marina there. And that doesn't happen. And it would also involve cutting the beach in half, uh, loss of amenity for beach walkers, um, etc. And the other thing too is the shallow water raises huge concerns around maintenance costs for ratepayers and taxpayers, and they're going to be huge and forever if it goes ahead. You were looking at the, this, this uh, again, this area is so unsuitable. The, um, this area is next to the causeway that, that takes you out to Garden Island. And that area, um, the, 
there is no, no circulation in Coburn Sound essentially because the causeway has, has sort of blocked it off. So we've already got a, a, real bit, a real mess there because of the causeway. The launching ramps next by to where they're proposing to uh, build this uh, canal development. The dredging alone costs over $100,000 year in, year out. I mean, just before Christmas, they had to spend another $170,000 with the ratepayers' money to clear the clear the uh, the sand that keeps accreting and silting up because it's such a it's shallow water and unsuitable. And uh, the other thing too, state, the state government or the taxpayer, you and I, have recently had to bail out the Busselton Shire after the developers went bust. So this was in November last year. So Colin Barnett handed over, uh, there was 1.5 million to clean up the mess and then lo they're looking at another 28 million of ratepay, uh, sorry, taxpayers money um, to fix up there because the de developers gone bust with this silly idea of a, a canal marina type idea. So surely we need to be learning from our mistakes. There is another concern too that the EPA, they're only looking at the environmental issues. The social impacts are not looked at. They don't look at traffic, dust, noise, the, bus the business model. Is it going to be viable? Construction over 8.5 years, so we're looking at 84 months of pole driving, trucks uh, toing and froing, getting, digging this huge hole in the, in the ground. And we don't need it. There's already a marina plan with approval in the Rockingham uh, beachfront area. But the thing is there, uh, and, and also the other um, place where they can easily build a marina, they, they've got uh, council approval, EPA approval, it's, it's got deep water, there's no seagrass to mess up, um, problem free, it's already, as I say, already been approved. But the only reason that Landcorp and Cedar Woods are going for Point Perrin, it's a cheap grab of land the public already own. If they were sincere about providing boat safety, they would be putting money into the Wanless Street, which is the other area that's, uh, as I say, deep water, closer to the, where, where that sort of amenity should be. So what are people saying locally? People are saying to me, why is such a development even being considered? Whose will are they representing in regards to this project? Who's driving this project? Whose interest is it in? It's a complete scandal that it's got this far. The suggestions of WI Inc style deals, handing over public property and big subsidies to profiteers, then getting the public to pay for the mess that's left over. So clearly this is an absolutely ridiculous proposal. So we, what our group did, we've consulted with the community and we've come up with an alternative that has widespread community support and it honours the 1964 land agreement. And we're calling it Cape Perrin Coastal Park. And it would be for the benefit of enjoyment of all people and not that just those who can afford uh, expensive housing and a berth in an exclusive inland marina. So we've got our uh, big banner over there, we've got a website at handsoffpointparent.com and capeparentcoastalpark.com so we've got a second website now to promote the vision, to promote what really should be happening in, with that land so the developers can't come back yet again and try and steal the land once we hopefully get rid of this recent grab or uh, recent attempt to get their hands on it. So uh, call to action is, is to uh, download, we've got a petition, we've got 8,000 original signatures so far. It's on the Hands Off Point Parent website. Um, we've got a Hands Off Point Parent Facebook uh, page, so that's a good way to communicate with people and let them know what we're doing. Um, we're taking uh, feed, community feedback on our Cape Parent Coastal Park website about what people think we should be doing with the land there that's in keeping with the 1964 agreement. Uh, and to find out more about the proposal, have a, a chat to James over at our stall over there and see Fiona if you'd like to get a t-shirt or a bumper sticker. So our message to Bulldozer Barnett and the complicit member for Rockingham, Mark McGowan, is this is our land, this is our heritage, it's our future and it's not for sale. Woohoo!